Stop the FOMO even if you're missing out on the Samsung HWQ990B with 11.1.4 channels. Could this flagship soundbar from Samsung be the best soundbar you can buy this year in 2022? We will answer that question by comparing it to my current benchmark soundbar from Sony costing $700 more. We are talking about Sony's own flagship system, the A7000 soundbar, SW5 subwoofer, and RS5 rear surround speakers. And we will compare both these soundbars to my reference Trinoff Genelec home theater system to see, well, what's the big difference between a flagship soundbar and a flagship home theater system. And why make these comparisons? It's all about context to let you know what the best sound bars can and cannot do. But first, let me introduce today's sponsor, Who Keys. Yep, you just finished your big old PC Windows build. You have the best of the best. And sadly, you have less than $20 to your name. Who Keys to the rescue. Use my code SF20 and immediate discount. Let's quickly go through the activation process after you've purchased Windows 10 on WhoKeys. Go to your WhoKeys account and select My Purchased Orders. See your order? To the far right, click on the button that says View Keys Codes to see the Windows CD code. At the bottom of this order where it says Code Card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on Settings. In the Settings menu, at the bottom, select Update and Security. Select activation, then select change product key, paste what you copied from Who Keys, click next, click activate, and you're done. You can download the Windows 10 Pro key and you're up and running. But that's not all, folks. Who Keys has keys for games too Steam, Origin, Uplay, you name it, you got it. Check out their sites, there are discounts for all sorts of stuff. And most importantly, you want to be productive? What about Office Suite? Yep, you can download a copy of Office Professional with my code SF20 at checkout and bam. Before we get into my review of the Samsung Q990B, a big thank you to B&H Photo for letting me borrow the Q990B to do this review. And after watching this review, if you do plan on buying the Q990B, please buy it from B&H Photo in the affiliate link below. And yes, I too am a customer of BH Photo buying cameras, lenses, lighting, tripods, recording equipment. And as always, the opinions of this review is my own with no input or approval from BH Photo. The Samsung Q990B Wireless Atmos soundbar is an 11.1.4 system. I put 11.1.4 in air quotes because Samsung as well as other soundbar makers are being very misleading when they say their system is 11.1.4 or 9.1.2 or 7.1.4 whatever. It is not really the same as a true 11.1.4 or a true 9.1.2.4 so what is the difference? Well, what do I mean by a true 9.1.4 and the soundbars version of these series of numbers? So first, what does 11.1.4 mean or what should it mean? 11, the first number is your ear level channels or your ear level speakers. Meaning if it says 11, there's supposed to be 11 speakers that surround you, right? So technically if it's 11 speakers, it would be something like three in front, left, center, right. Then you have the other eight <laughs> surround ear level. So maybe extra wides and then your surrounds and then rear surrounds and then maybe right behind you is a pair of something behind you. Well, already we know this is wrong because at most Samsung gives you the sound bar, one subwoofer and two rear satellite speakers, right? So how does that add up to 11.1.4? It doesn't. So let's start with the one thing it did get right, 0.1, right? 11.1.4. That first decimal point, the 0.1, represents a subwoofer. So at least that's accurate. When you see a system, a soundbar system that says 11.1.4, if it comes with a subwoofer, then the 0.1 is accurate. 
That's what that is. That's the LFE channel, the low frequency channel, and that is your subwoofer channel. So there are very few soundbar systems that have more than a 0.1. With the exception of Nakamichi, which is a 9.2.4, but the 0.2, they actually give you two subwoofers, and I believe Sennheiser's latest soundbar for 2022, up to four subwoofers, which is amazing. Anyway, back to the 11.1.4 system from Samsung. So the 0.1, that's accurate, but the 11 is not. At best, this will sound like a 5.1 system. Three in front, which is what the soundbar represents. It gives you a center channel and a little bit of front surround, and then your two satellites, one, two, wireless, will either give you some strong, good surround left, right, and possibly a little bit of rear, but it's not going to be a true 7.1. I think at closest, it'll be a 5.1. So when you see soundbars that say, ooh, I have all these many channels, right? They're all going to sound very similar in that they're going to give you a decent 5.1, maybe 7.1 if you have more surround, but definitely not 9.1.4 as is being promised by the Samsung or any models out there right now. LG, Sennheiser, Sony, Vizio, TCL, it doesn't matter. Now, back to this review. So, my review will be the perception of surround sound as it compares to the existing benchmark, the Sony A7000, very large soundbar, and the SW subwoofer. I'm using the Sony for two reasons. First, it gets loud. For people with larger rooms that can only use a soundbar, the A7000 is one of the loudest soundbars you can get, and it doesn't distort for the volume, so that's a great option for you with larger rooms. The A7000 is as large as the Q990B, and it looks great with larger 77, 75 inch TVs. It might still look a little small with the 85 inch, 83 inch TVs, but it gets loud for most moderately sized rooms. And that's why I like the A7000, right? clarity of dialogue, it gets loud for special effects, and the matching subwoofer SW5 gets loud enough for a soundbar. I don't expect it to dig deep like my Genelex reference subwoofer. Now we'll get into my Genelex system so you guys know what I'm comparing it to and why I'm comparing it to the Genelex system. But the Sony itself though is an excellent system and that's why it serves as my benchmark. And of course I almost forgot, I added the RS5 satellite surrounds and definitely needed. Now, the HTA9, which I've reviewed before, to me gives you a very immersive surround system, and that's what the RS5 actually is kind of. It's like a smaller version of the HTA9, right, except it's in black. It's fairly heavy and robust. I'm convinced it's a variation of the HTA9 serving as surround and it's not cheap it's about $600 when it was released this year but definitely necessary for those who have the A7000 and want the true surround effect okay so that's my benchmark comparison and it totals around $2300 even bundled you might save one or two hundred dollars it's a good system and definitely worthwhile if you're not looking for budget or value so how close does the Q990B from Samsung get to the Sony. We'll start with the setup. The Samsung Q990B has a remote control which directly controls the sound bar, but keep in mind that the sound bar's display, you only have two options. One, the display on the sound bar itself, which is not very clear, right? It's a small little digital readout. I don't like it very much because it doesn't tell you enough information. It does not display on the TV like the Sony. The Sony's UI, the user interface is on the TV itself, but the Samsung, most of that information will be on the SmartThings app. Yes, you'll have to download the Samsung SmartThings app either on an iPhone or an Android, and then from there, you'll be able to quickly update the firmware, which I did, and also control the various channel levels and checking to see that everything's connected. If you have multiple Samsung home theater products, like my TVs and so forth, then it's quite easy because you should already have the SmartThings app. If not, go ahead and download it and it will then recognize and find your soundbar and you can take control from there. The Sony 
is a little bit easier in the sense that there are many people who do not like to download an app on their phone regardless of its usability. Speaking of controllers, we have the two remotes. This is the Sony and this is the Samsung. The Samsung remote looks suspiciously like their TV remotes very minimal and it lacks some of the controls of the Sony. For me, the biggest thing lacking really is the direct control of the Sony. I can directly and quickly change the subwoofer, the bass frequency, as well as the surround speaker volume. Here you have to go through the menus or possibly use the app to get that level of control. So minimalism versus, well, quick access control. I prefer the Sony because depending on the movie, depending on the content, I could add a little bit of bass frequency, take it away, add a bit more surround, take it away. Whereas with the Samsung, you really have to have the app to do everything you need to do. So if you do not want to download an app to control your sound bar, the Samsung Q990B may not be for you because you lose a lot of that control and the ease of firmware update without the Smart Things app, go ahead and get a soundbar like the Sony, which does not require an app. I have both, I was testing both, and I found that the Sony is a bit easier to use, mostly because I don't have to pull out my phone, connect it, connect it to the TV, UI appears, boom, 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 get the settings down. But if you're already in the Samsung ecosystem, like the Smart Things app, not a problem. It smoothly fits right in with the rest of your home theater system if it's mostly a Samsung ecosystem that you're in. Now, another unique feature of the Q990B compared to previous generations of the flagship Samsung soundbar is that it's wireless. Both the main soundbar could be wireless, as in wirelessly connected to your TV, and the side surround satellite speakers are also wireless as well. Now wireless in that you don't need speaker cables to connect directly to the soundbar or to the TV, but you still need a power cable. Now this is in contrast to the Sony RS5. It is also wireless, it requires power cable. However, it can also be battery run, meaning you can power up and keep the Sony RS5 surrounds connected. And then once the battery is up, you can disconnect it and it will run for a few hours that way. The Samsung doesn't have that option, but then that explains why. The Sony is a bit more expensive, almost $600 right now for the RS5, whereas the Samsung includes their side surrounds in the entire package for what is currently 1600 street prices right now. And speaking of the wireless surround, here they are. This is the Sony, as you can see, no wires, and it is battery powered and of course then we have the Samsung right here which does require a power cable to keep on running now as you can see they are relatively different in size the Sony is clearly a bit more robust right it's a little bit heavier a little bit larger Samsung a little bit lighter a little bit lightweight definitely this one is a bit more premium in both feel and design, however, it does cost a bit extra, five to $600 when bought separately. And this is included in the $1,600 street price of the Q990B. But something to keep in mind, however, this Sony is a bit larger and heavier. Two reasons, one, battery. Second, it can go a little bit louder. So if you have a larger room, you might want to consider the A7000 Plus RS5 if you find that the Q990B may not be loud enough. I found it to be loud enough, but for value, I start with the Q990B, especially if you have a Samsung TV. And because it's wireless, there's also the risk of dropouts. Now, the risk of dropouts really applies to all wireless systems. A lot of people complain that the Sony HTA9 had some dropouts. Direct line of sight is best. Avoid having a router nearby. And the Samsung Q990B is no different. Lots of complaints recently by some where they're saying, oh, you know, my subwoofer is disconnecting wirelessly or the side surrounds wirelessly is not working, but not everyone has that problem, only some people. But this is a risk, I believe, for any wireless system. So keep that in mind. If you opt for a wireless system, you may risk disconnect some affected, some not, or it could be something like a panel lottery where the system's just broken and you just have to replace it. Now, what about the settings for the Samsung Q990B? It's pretty much plug and play. 
you click surround because really that's your only option and it does the rest there's not any settings or finicky little settings to enable or disable unlike the sony so the q990b you put it on surround you're set it works well i got full surround not necessarily 11.1.4 but it did feel like a strong 5.1 at least there was a surround sound bubble that was front left and a touch of rear depending on where you put that satellites right the sony on the other hand keep this in mind if you have the sony a7000 with rs5 you must disable the 360 spatial audio that is no good for movies because it reduces the effect of the surround disable it and enable dtsx neural or dtsx it sounds way more immersive. I can actually hear the surround speakers. So with the Samsung, very simple. Put it on surround, you're good to go. If you want more of a surround channel effect, go into the app and the rear channels, just raise that level a little bit. And it really depends on the distance that you place the speakers to your sitting position. And yes, I'll have comparisons as well for those with the Samsung TV, the latest flagship, where they offer the Q Symphony integration, where your TV's audio is integrated with a soundbar. I'll have some comparisons later with that as well. Now, what about the subwoofer? So thankfully, the Q990B comes with its own subwoofer, which is a great thing. Without a subwoofer, that impact of the movies is a bit lost. This subwoofer helps greatly. Now, how good is the subwoofer? Well, how good can it be when it's combined with a soundbar system? But it's definitely better than not having one. The question is, how close does it get to the Sony SW5, which is right now around $500 if it's bundled with the A7000 soundbar? It's very close. As a matter of fact, the Sony only goes a little bit deeper, but it feels like it lacks a little bit in clarity. I found the Q990B included subwoofer Excellent, especially for a sound bar. Now, obviously, it could get a little bit deeper, and you can see what that sounds like when I compare it to my Trinoff system. But ultimately, though, better than your TV. So if you're deciding, hey, is this for any good? Should I get the sound bar? Ask yourself, well, it's either that or you go for a full discrete system with an AVR, a subwoofer, and that's going to cost more than the $1,500, $1,600 that the Q990B would cost you. I'd still go with the Q990B and integrated subwoofer because among soundbars, definitely good enough and easily a match for the Sony SW5. I think the real difference is in the cosmetics. The SW5 it's just better looking, right? It feels like it has the full leather. It's something that you can look at and go, oh, wow, you know, that's, that's kind of fancy. The Q990B's included self woofer is just a black box. I mean, it's not ugly. It's a black box. So put it somewhere that is out of the way. But remember, keep it in line of sight of your sound bar. For testing my purposes, right, I made it near field. What does that mean? My sitting position, both subwoofers literally inches away from my chair. This way I can feel the effect of each subwoofer without the room dominating the effect of the low frequencies. And yes, it definitely will differ from room to room. So in this review, we're not gonna review the subwoofer performance because it's impossible to extrapolate what I feel with my near field version of these subwoofers against your room experience. If you're in a smaller room, you're going to have a lot more subwoofer power than if you're in a larger room. And additionally, where you place the subwoofer, you might be sitting in a place where there's a null and you can't hear anything, where there's an important impact. You're like, wait, what happened to that impact that I heard in the movie theater, right? So my review will not have subwoofer sound as part of the clips. I've rolled it off below 100 hertz. We're going to focus on the surround effect because ultimately, if I say, wow, this is an amazing subwoofer and you don't plan to have that subwoofer sitting in near field, you're not going to show my experience. So that's something to keep in mind when you listen to my clips. Next up, what you've all been waiting for, sound clip comparisons. In this case, the sound clips will be of two movies, John Wick 3 and Ready Player One. I took the parts where I thought had great surround immersion that I can separate the different systems. More importantly, what am I using to record it with? The recording system I'm using is Sonic Presence. It's a binaural system that I hang over my ears, right? It gives you the sense of 3D sound recording and the space in my room. 
but it doesn't capture everything, obviously. It cannot capture a fully immersive system, but it gives you a sense of something to compare it to, right? And it gives you a sense of the maybe the tonality of the two systems. They're very similar. And yes, I've volume matched all three systems, the Samsung, the Sony, and my Trinoff system, so that when recording, it sounds very similar. And a lot of it could be my room as well. So keep that in mind. What you hear in my recordings, I had it heavily room corrected on the Trinoff system. So the Trinoff will always sound clearer in both dialogue and effects. That's why you get an expensive system. The other two, the Sony and the Samsung, has no room correction beyond what is in that system itself. They both claim to have some level of calibration room correction, but obviously it's not going to be as effective or as clean as the Trinov, and so that's why people pay extra, right? Whether it's Dirac Live or Trinov or Odyssey or Anthem's Arc, they will give you a slightly clearer channel separation. And that's what I wanted you guys to hear as well, right? Now let's get into the comparisons. And at the end, you can tell me in the comments below if you notice a difference or if the differences are even important to you. Sound quality itself is very close. Now, obviously, the Trinov, way deeper, way not louder, but fuller, and each channel more discreet, but that's what you're paying for, right? When you pay for a Dirac system, or Anthem's Arc, or the Trinov, or even Denon Morant's Odyssey, it gives you the ability to tune to your room to make all the channels clearer. But for those of you going from a TV, move up to the soundbar. It is such an immense upgrade. But wait, a comparison between the soundbar with Q-Symphony and without Q-Symphony. So what makes the Samsung soundbar unique in that it's integrated to the TV's entire room calibration system so that you're getting the audio from the TV with the soundbar fully integrated. So let's check out the sound clips comparing the Q990B with the Q900B TV combined, it's a 65 inch TV, so it's not the 85 inch, which would have larger speakers. It is a 65 inch Samsung Q900B 8K flagship Q Symphony TV together with the Q990B soundbar. The girl. The girl. <laughs> She's not gonna make it. She's not gonna make it. Bail out! Bail! Bail out! Bail! Okay, the differences are definitely subtle. For me, two things. It does sound bigger. Now, the microphones did not capture the larger sound, and this is more of acoustic illusion. It's not louder, it just sounded like it surrounded me more, a little bit more immos immersive, right? Because I know the TV is bouncing more sound off the walls. Not necessarily more height, it just felt like the bubble was more immersive. It's not like I was getting more discrete sounds, just more sound around me, more ambient sound around me. So it does work. Now, is it worth paying extra, extra to get a Samsung TV just to get the Q-Symphony? I wouldn't do it just for Q-Symphony because it's very subtle. And how do I know these soundbars do not sound like a true 
9.1.4 or 7.1.4 or 11.1.4, it's because I'm comparing it to my reference discrete home theater system, which is a trend off altitude 16 plus all Genelec speakers and a Genelec subwoofer, all room corrected and speaker corrected. And yes, this makes sure, it ensures that I can hear all the discrete channels from all around, whether it's above or side or behind me or below, wherever the sound's supposed to be coming from, having the speaker set up this way allows me to hear it all. I'm ensured that distortion and interference from the room is minimized, channel separation is maximized, and what the creator intended for me to hear, I can hear it all. So I can tell you, oh, well, the soundboard gets this close, gets a lot closer, is this far behind? And then of course, how they compare to each other, because many people are like, well, what am I getting if I upgrade to a fully discrete system with a dedicated AVR and a bunch of dedicated speakers, right? So in conclusion, Q990B, excellent, easily a replacement for my Sony reference benchmark system. Am I gonna replace it? Well, I don't need to, cause I already have the Sony. So the Sony continues to be great, but the Samsung is right there. So those of you who have a Samsung TV, highly recommend it. If you have other brands, LG or Sony, you have other options as well. Obviously it can never replace a true 11.1 point for a system without having more discrete speakers, but definitely it is better than anything else out there that was going for $1,600 three years ago. Let me know what you think. Do you have a discrete system you could put together for $1,600 that's better than the Samsung? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, stop the FOMO.